Pew Research has a new poll out, and it proves yet again that the issue of money in politics and corruption is a uniting issue among the American people. So when you talk to regular Republicans and regular Democrats, this is an issue they all agree on. The only place where there's not agreement is elite circles. So on Wall Street in Washington, D.C., that's where they pump the brakes and go, no, 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 money in politics is actually wonderful. But regular Republicans, regular Democrats, just people who go to work and come home and take care of their kids, and if you ask them their opinion on money and politics and corruption, they all basically believe the same thing. So take a look at this. This is, uh, these are some amazing results from Pew Research. They say widespread support for limiting money in campaigns, about two-thirds say such laws would be effective. So here's one of the statements. There should be limits on the amount of money candidates can spend on campaigns. Look at these numbers. In total, 77% of the American people say, yes, limit the amount of money candidates um, can spend on campaigns. And then you break it down by age. 18 to 29 year olds, 68%. 30 to 49, 77%. 50 to 64, 82%. 65 plus, 79%. So this is, listen, there's a, there are generational divides on almost every single issue. This is one of the few issues where everybody's like, yeah, what are we talking about here? Of course. Then they break it down by party. Uh, Republican and lean Republicans, 71% limit the amount of money candidates can spend on campaigns. 85% of Democrat and lean Democrat. Um, and then conservative, 66%. Moderate and liberal, 79%. Um, and then among Democrat and lean Democrat, conservative and moderate, 82%, liberal, 90%. Then the next column you see, new laws could be effective in reducing uh, the role of money in politics. In total, 65%, yes. 18 to 29-year-olds, 69%. Uh, 30 to 49-year-olds, 66%. 50 to 64-year-olds, 65%. 65 years and older. 58%. Uh, Republican and lean Republican, 54. Democrat and lean Democrat, 77. So, overwhelmingly, people realize that money in politics breeds corruption. Now, let me give you one more here because this is also fascinating. Most continue to say government is run by a few big interests. Wow. Okay. So, the percentage of people that say the government is run for the benefit of all people, just 21%. Only 21% of the American people say our government is run to benefit the American people. You know what that means? Your system is broken. In what's supposed to be a constitutional republic, and a representative democracy. People say, the government doesn't give a fuck what I want and what would help regular people. That's a broken system. That's what that is. 70, what's that say? 76% say that the government is run, quote, by a few big interests looking out for themselves See, this is the core issue in American politics. And people have gotten, they got it right. They got it right. Now, listen, it's true that when you speak to the American people about specific historical facts, it's a fact that they're largely ignorant of historical facts. There's been countless, you know, polls that show that you know, the number of people who can name even one person on the Supreme Court or the number of people who can name the vice president. Yes, it is true that when you, the American people are largely ignorant of American history. They're largely ignorant of the specifics as to how our government functions. And that's not good. You know, I'm not going to make excuses for that. But at the same time, it's possible to be both incorrect about historical facts. So you're ignorant, but ignorance is not the same as stupidity. That's not the same thing. Ignorance is, oh, you didn't learn these facts. 
Stupidity is you're really fundamentally incapable of learning those facts. Or like, you don't, you don't make logical connections. That's stupidity. Well, the American people are not stupid by any stretch of the imagination. They may be ignorant, they're not stupid. Because even, even though I don't think they can describe the exact nature of how this corruption takes place, and they probably can't tell you, like, okay, it's lobbyists, they're the problem, the super PACs are the problem, corporate money's the problem, the wealthy donors are the problem, and what they do is they give campaign contributions, and then once the politicians get elected, they pay back the people who gave them the campaign contributions through favorable legislation. I don't think they could describe it in any serious amount of detail, but their gut instinct on this is 100% correct. Their gut instinct is, hey, something's off here. They're not taking care of us. They're not looking out for us. And it probably has something to do with big money affecting the politicians. So, this is the fundamental agreement between the right and the left in America. The average Joes. But where there's, where there's a consensus in the opposite direction, Washington, D.C. Wall Street. That's where they go, no! We, and what they've done is, it's actually kind of brilliant, even though it's evil. They've, made, they've turned it into a fake free speech issue. So... Instead of recognizing that money in politics is a corrupting influence, they say, no, it is our right. It is a corporation's right. It is a billionaire's right to spend money on, po on, on politicians because that's political speech. So that's my free speech saying how much I like this politician when I give them a tremendous amount of money and then they do my bidding. That's what that is. There's no quid pro quo. There's no quid pro quo. I didn't say, hey, you have to do X, Y, and Z for me. That's right, because it's implicit. When ExxonMobil gives money to politicians, it's implicit you're going to vote for the subsidy for ExxonMobil, right? You don't have to say it. So that's what they've done, is they've obfuscated the issue by saying, no, 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 this is about free speech rights. Well, if it was about free speech rights and money equals speech, well, then prostitution should be legal on the grounds that, hey, I'm not actually paying for a blowjob. I'm just saying blowjobs are awesome. That's my speech. Even though it's money, it's speech. Hey, I'm... Sure, I'm smoking crystal meth, but I, I when I bought the crystal meth, I'm not actually buying a product. I'm just saying, hey, this is my speech. I'm speaking about how much I love crystal meth when I give the money to the dealer. That's it. That's free speech. See, in other contexts, you understand how ludicrous the notion is that money equals speech. But when it comes to politics, we'll have to throw our logic out the window and act like, no, no, it's uh, money is speech. No, it is bribery. That's legalized bribery in this country. That's what we have. Legalized bribery. And people are onto it. They're fucking onto it. They know what's going on, man. So, listen. There are many ways to try to fight back against this. And I support every single way to get money out of politics. So there's represent.us. And they're trying to fight, I think, at the local level. To change laws and, and move in the right direction towards clean elections. I support that. There's move to amend. There's wolf pack. You know, that... They're trying to get an amendment to the Constitution which bans um, private money in politics and mandates clean elections by law. That's the best way to get it done. I support every way to try to get it done, but that's the best way because that's the only thing that will stick. Because the Supreme Court ruled basically money is speech. So that means you have to change the Constitution to get the interpretation that we need, which is, no, private money's banned and public, um, public financing is the only way. So that's how you limit corruption. Every system's going to have corruption. Every system is, because that's part of human nature. But you can limit it as much as possible by doing clean elections. So it's great to see that the American people agree on this, because they're right about it. And we should unify among the people to fight back against the elites, because it's the elites who are dragging the system back for their own benefit.